Types of lighting. Well, you know, the big, uh, the big breakthrough uh, away from constant lighting, uh, generally incandescent kinds of lights that they were using for film, photographers used all of those until uh, William Edgerton invented the, uh, it, I believe he was at MIT, uh, invented the, uh, the strobe, the flash tube. And that did a couple of things. First of all, it made it, uh, you know, they had flash bulbs before that, and before that there was uh, flash powder, a way to uh, make a, a very strong light very quickly and made it, made it mobile. Uh, but the big breakthrough for, for all photographers, particularly studio photographers, was the flash tube. And that allowed you, you know, a, um, a flash tube fires at about a 20,000th of a second. So if you shoot in the dark, that becomes your shutter speed. So your shutter opens, you set off the flash, 22 thousandth of a second, 20 thousandth of a second, that is your shutter speed. So that's how Edgerton, and you'll remember his pictures, the uh, bullet going through the apple, uh, those kinds of things. That's how he did those. The, uh, the water drop, another famous picture where it makes the crown. Yep. He was able to do that with uh, the flash tube. And uh, now they're to the point where it used to be you had a big box, you had a big uh, uh, condenser and a lot of equipment. But now monolights, you know, the whole light, everything you need, you put it at the top of the stand, uh, you use a uh, pocket wizard radio to set the thing off and you put the transmitter on your camera and uh, you can be anywhere. So you just set your camera off and all the lights go off and everything's lit and you just need to make a decision about whether or not you like the light and where to place the lights. That's tough. It used to be daylight in tungsten, and the difficulty was that the light that a tungsten light puts out, or an incandescent light, uh, has much more of the red spectrum. So it caused film that was balanced for daylight to appear really red. And uh, some of that's okay. Some warming is nice, and there are different filters that you use to warm. But uh, too much of it uh, makes it look like it was taken with the wrong film. So they, uh, they had a special tungsten film, and uh, I think we use that most with uh, Kodachrome and Ektachrome. Uh, the uh, daylight film has a tendency to be, uh, uh, if you use the, the uh, tungsten film outdoors, it's way too blue because it's balanced to uh, add blue to the red and make it look normal. Uh, so that if you're using daylight film inside, you could filter it with a blue filter. If you're using it outside, you could filter it with a, a red filter to bring it down. With the digital, what you're working with is a color balance, and you can pick that out. You can pick automatic, you can pick uh, fluorescent. That was always a problem with, with uh, tr you know, the older transparency films, was you had to figure out what, what that fluorescent light color was and filter for it so that skin tones and those things were right. In digital, you can just pick it. You can pick fluorescent, you can pick automatic, you can pick uh, incandescent, you can pick flash, you can pick daylight, you can pick shade, you can pick open shade. I mean, you know, there's a, you just hit white balance and check it out. The other thing is in, um, in Photoshop, uh, you can find white. In fact, if you put a target in it, uh, with a target that has a medium gray, has a white, and has a black, uh, you can go into adjustments and, uh, and actually adjust the ramp so that uh, you can say, okay, this is white and this is black and this is gray. And so it takes out any color cast, any difficulty that way. It gives you perfect uh, color balance. And then if you want a little warmer, you can push the slider over a little bit and make it a little warmer. It's pretty nice. Digital is pretty nice.